Okay guys, welcome to this lecture. This is all about uh, Chitubox. Now I've got Chitubox version V1.6.3. So um, first thing I wanna do is get a model in here. Now to actually zoom around, you use your right mouse button to orientate. You use your, sorry, your right mouse button. Use your left mouse button to translate up and down, middle mouse button to roll in and out. You can also use these little things here to go top left, okay? And turn that off or on, perspective to frame it. Okay, so that's that orientation. So remember, left mouse button, right mouse button, middle mouse button, mouse, uh, middle mouse scroll wheel. Okay, middle mouse button also translates. Now to open a file, I've got a file here that I've got. It's actually a, I think it's a Grazetti's female. I just put a dress on her. Uh, let me show you. Yep, here. And this is an OBJ, but you can bring an STL in as well. So I've got that. So you can just drag it straight in here. I could drag it straight across and drop it in. Or you can go to open here. So if you go open, then you can find that model, uh, which is in print here, there. And I can click open. Bang, jumps in there. Now I purposely did this oversize. I didn't export it a particular size. You can see um, when it's out of bounds, it kind of goes out of bounds, but you need to set this up with your printer. So the first thing you guys are gonna need to do is to actually set this up for your particular printer. All right, so before I do that, I'm just gonna run through some of these tools quickly. Right, inside here, you have the ability to go and move this and center it on the plate. So I could start to move it this way on the on the Y, on the Z, you can move it there, yeah? You can also put on the plate, so it will jump down to the plate. You can center it as well, or you can reset it back to what it was. Uh, in here, you have the ability to use this to start to orientate your model around. Again, you can reset it. Uh, you can also come and grab this. Now, what's weird about this is if I click off, it will just stop. So I need to go and reactivate it again. But you can basically slide it. Notice it's sticking to the kind of plate. That's its point of reference there. So let's put it up there. Let's actually put it 90 degrees in here. Okay. And let's go to the next one, which is this one, which is the scale. So I can scale to fit. Bang. Now what it's doing there is, let's bring this down. Uh, by the way, if you've got ratios locked on, it will do it to a ratio. I'll do it to 34, that's better. Okay. So you can see I can move that around. I can rotate this like this, and I can put it at a slight angle for printing. So that's how we can get something in there and orientate. So I want to run through these. That's obviously open file. You can save this file as a Chitu box. So I could save there. I'm going to save it into print and we're just going to call it female base Chitu box. Notice that extension. This is not a file. This is the Chitu box file. It's not an export of the file for print. Okay. Uh, next one is you can screen capture. I'll not use this. You can undo, redo, which is really handy. You can also clone the current model. You can auto lay it out. So if you've got multiple pieces on here, it will lay it out. So if I do something like clone and clone again, clone again, you can hit the auto and click center and it will try and lay it out on the grid as best it can. You'll also see up here, this is the file list. So as I'm adding more, you can see it's being added and I can click on these to activate these. You'll see it jumping over here. Yep, so if I want to get rid of some of these, I can click this and then I can center this again in there, like that. 
Okay, so that's clone and auto layout. We can also hollow, hollow the model, and we can also dig a hole to let the resin pour out as well. So these are the controls in here. We have the settings for the slicer here, and this is where you can dictate your, your version. So if I wanna add a new, you can see I've got my Anycubic Photon S. I've named this particular one Photon's Default Green Basic. But if I'm adding a new machine, I can click Machine. You can go here and choose the machine as long as it's supported by uh, the Chitu box. So I'll go Anycubic, Anycubic S. You can see a little picture come up. And then I can click OK, and it will be added here as a new profile. Okay, can also bin a profile. So I can add it, I can edit that profile name as well. So I could come in here and call it something else. Test. Now I can jump to this one. You can see I've got Photon Default Green Basic. This is the green resin that comes when you buy the, the um, printer. Uh, I've got a grey resin that I'm going to be printing, so I'm going to set up a new profile for that. So you can notice that under that machine I can add a new profile. I'll be doing that later. I'm just going to get rid of this one for now because I don't need it. Okay, so that's how you can set that up and name it. So I suggest you name that and add multiple profiles for different resins that you're using. So inside of here we have, all, I'm not going to go into all of this, but we have all of the settings for um, exposure time in fields um, and some advanced stuff there as well. Uh, might know I haven't got anti-alias in here, but you have on the default program that comes with the Photon S. I don't need it, it works fine. So when you choose the Anycubic Photon S, it comes in with the right sizes and obviously the mirror type. So you can test it. In fact, I tested it first time with this basic setting and it worked. I have made a few changes since to the bottom exposure and exposure time, but that's all I've done. I've also tried some different layer heights which work for me, but we'll be talking about that later. This is just showing you Chitubox. Let me close that. Those get saved out with Chitubox, so they're always in there when you open a new project. So if you've got multiple profiles, they will also be loaded in. So we've gone through this, we've gone through all this side. So down here, we have a few things. You can save the project, uh, which we showed you, save there, and some help stuff going on here, change the language, blah, blah, blah. So the next most important thing is to actually look at the supports, which is in here. So in the next lecture, what we're gonna do, do is look at supports for this. Now I'm not gonna go into great detail, I'm gonna go into more detail when we start working on the actual finished test print of the Sexy Vampire, which I've got, which we're gonna bring in. Let me just bring that file in now so you can sort of see it. Now you'll see this is a bigger file, but this is the one that we're gonna be testing out this is what we created in a section, in the big section, the workshop section on uh, Sexy Vampire. So that's the one we're gonna be testing it with, uh, but I'm gonna show you the basics of using supports in the next lecture.